What is up, everybody? Welcome to Happy Hour with Scotch on the Rocks. I'm your host on this podcast. It's Happy Hour. I'm joined with my cousin, Cody Lane. Cody, how are you doing tonight? You know, going to be a long, long time for me to answer that question. Uh, but in short, you know, I'm doing pretty good. It's, uh, it's a beautiful night outside, and... Uh, Got the door open. It's going to be a nice breezy mm -hmm. through in the apartment. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, excited to uh, be sitting down talking with you, buddy. Yeah. It's been a while since we actually talked. And so. Right. Like a one on one just conversation of butt fuck whatever. <laughs> so. Um, yeah. But, you know, not. <laughs> yeah. No. No. That was just a just... figure of speech. I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So a lot of things have been happening on your end, it sounds like, with your projects with, um, is it Kian? Uh, yeah, Kian Carlisle uh, with his uh, Transformers animated YouTube channel, as mm -hmm. well as his just regular Kian Carlisle channel. Um did a lot of uh, artwork and voice acting for him on that end for uh, this little Combaticons fan project pilot, and that was uh, that, that was pretty fun. That, that was a pretty exciting experience to be a part of, and uh, I believe that there will be more to come mm -hmm. with him and this project. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it was you know fun doing some. Uh, concept art and uh, just brainstorming ideas to throw at them to put in the episode and uh, you know we hope that this whole entire project you know is seen and and heard I'm, there's a lot of positive uh, feedback and uh, responses from it from a lot of DF fans and we're, we're just tickled about that so we're we're kind of getting into the mood of, you know, maybe we want to continue on. And uh, if it does get seen, well, that's great. But uh, if not, then we'll just keep, you know, hopefully continuing. So. Yeah, hopefully. I did watch that pilot episode. And for those who have not seen it yet, it's an interesting twist and concept of pa the past... <laughs> um, timeline of the Civil War to where, what are the Compaticons? Are they just travelers or ruffians or what are what are they doing after serving Megatron? Like, this is like a fresh new topic that you guys have like, piloted to where mm -hmm. you, you, have, you haven't seen it in any other Transformer like, show or comic book. Or, well, I mean, maybe somewhat like the IDW comics but not in this mm -hmm. sort of sense. So what Kean was uh, wanting to go for was that the uh, Combaticons are in search of Megatron, and he's MIA, so they need to uh, go through all of these hoops and obstacles in order to reach him, and um, as well as a lot of uh, comedic hijinks ensuing, so... <laughs> so, so we're still brainstorming, we're still backstory... Uh, building on these characters and um, you know, an another twist that we decided that would be fun to do is that uh, the Autobots are incredible jerks to the Decepticons like what you see on Earth is just a facade of how nice the Autobots oh, are but really? like the Decepticons they are complete ass wipes really <laughs> so, okay like Bumblebee he's he's just like you know he's he's popular in the Transformers franchise and you know in general mm -hmm. but in this you know I was thinking that it would be funny for him to know that he is popular and so therefore he's just a rowdy rambunctious little brat this, this <laughs> Like he's just posh and just privileged and stuff. He's just like, oh, look at me, I'm Bumblebee. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like uh, um, I uh, was wondering if I could share uh, my screen with you. Yeah. Let's um, show some artwork. Yeah, artwork 
that stuff is always always uh, recommended and encouraged. It's just copyright music. I got to be careful with if there's any of that, which I don't. I know there's oh. not, but I mean for future reference. It's a. Uh, it's a, nothing like that. So. All right. Um, yeah. Share it up here, dude. All right. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You can see me. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, not yet. It's not popping up. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, let me. It's not doing it. What the heck? It's not letting me see your camera. Sharing. I'll try it again. <laughs> it's what the heck Nothing. um hold on let me go ahead and shut that off real quick i'm gonna add a roll to you that's probably okay. it i'm still working the kinks out on this uh server uh, oh not that one um the boys yes now try it so check it out Yep. Is your input set to your screen for sharing? Uh, yeah. Uh, entire screen. Click on that. What share. The oh, there it goes. Okay. Yeah. All right. To perfect. Do it. Okay. Can you see me? Yep. I can see your stuff. All right. Okay. So continuing on. Okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Autumn's doing D and D in the background. <laughs> this is her D and D day, so I get to do whatever. I'm like, oh right, because uh... we're so busy. Like she likes to, me to come to her karate, and uh, we do gym, and then we just hang out, and and then I'm busy with work, and then live streaming and all that stuff. <laughs> So to go on with this concept. It's a it's a it's a children's show. Uh yeah, it's it's a. I, I guess it's a show that kids can uh, watch, um, but it's mostly for the Transformers fans. Mm -hmm. Like the you know older generation. It's it's, it's got a lot of uh, slapstick and um, Easter eggs that a lot of. Older Transformers fans will mm -hmm. get to enjoy. Um, let's see. I just realized I'm, I've been eating. Well, Autumn made her uh, beer mac and cheese <laughs> with bacon, and I'm like, oh, that's not good for the boys. <laughs> So anyway, Cody, how are you? Oh, I am. Oh, no, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, here's some uh, artwork that I've done, um, just showcasing <laughs> how the Autobots are towards Decepticon. Oh, he's flipping the bird. <laughs> that's that's but, cool. Um, yeah, it's it's just you know, it's fun to do, fun fun to brainstorm. So you guys are going um, more of the like the Transformers animated inspiration art style, along those lines, yeah. Around there, because I see um, I see a lot of the Fall of Cybertron aspect to it too. Yeah, in a way. Like there, there's some uh, like onslaughts. Uh, vehicle mode was heavily based on um, his uh, War for Cybertron game mode. Yeah, I wish we had a continuation of that. Like, Rise of the Dark Spark was not it after that game. And then High Moon no. lost the licensing, and I was like, ah. They had an opportunity to make it great and continue it on with mm -hmm. the Netflix, Netflix, but... Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> did you... That's, uh, that's the, there's a new... That's a lot of problems, game. too, about that um, uh, show is that... 
a lot of Transformers shows is of like Optimus Prime, Megatron. Everyone's in search for Optimus Prime. Where's Optimus Prime? It, it, everything's all black and dark and gritty and mm-hmm. you know terrible. Uh, like we need to find the Allspark and Megatron, my brother. And his my- voice acting was very spaced out too. Like it was. It wasn't yeah, that- I am Optimus Prime. It's more. Yeah, what, what's his name? Uh, I, is it Dave um, Fushi? I think so. I know he's a YouTuber. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I hear he did all right on um, Cyberverse. Oh, did he voice Optimus on Cyberverse? I believe so. See, that's a show I need to watch too. I heard that one was pretty good. Yeah, they they did a lot of cool stuff for YouTubers as well on there. Yeah, I heard so. Combiner Wars was good too. Yeah, I, I watched a little bit of that, and you know, the voice acting is pretty good in that. I mean, yeah, of course, Peter Cullen back as Optimus Prime, and then um, uh, what's his name from Hellboy? Ron Perlman is he Megatron? Yeah, he, no, he played uh, Optimus Primal. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and I guess he's reprising his role as Optimus Primal in Rise of the Beasts. Huh. Full circle. I was I was surprised because the original Beast Wars voice actor was the same Beast, uh, voice actor for Armada Prime as well. I forget his mm-hmm. name. As well as Megatron's voice actor between uh, Beast Wars and Armada. More of the cunning. Calculated. Yes, Megatron. <laughs> so some that's some of the concept artwork that you have been providing for. So he's got two channels. Did we lose him? Cody. Hello. I think we may have lost him. I'm going to text him. <laughs> I don't know if we lost him. Let's, let's see. There you are. Okay. Oh, you're back. Yeah. I was like, I was talking. I'm like, hello? Oi. <laughs> <laughs> like Josh? <laughs> he did. What happened? Are, are you there, buddy? Yeah, I'm here. I'm lost! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So this is some of the concept art you've been providing for um, Kean. And he's got two YouTube channels? Uh, yeah, he's got his normal Kean Carlisle YouTube channel, which basically you know, goes over the Disney Channel TV shows and, and uh, some, I think, a couple Cartoon Network shows. Um, mm-hmm. But I, it's mostly the Disney Channel shows, and he reviews those, and he, you know, studies them. He, uh, and then his uh, Transformers channel, while well, it's pretty self-explanatory, mm-hmm. um, he's a huge Transformers animated fan, and um, wow, he's uh, interviewed uh, Marty Eisenberg, who is one of the writers of Transformers Animated, Mm -hmm. and um, also uh, one of the uh, writers, writers or directors? Maybe both? Of Cyberverse. He's he's interviewed those guys, so I I would highly check those interviews out, and, you know, just show them um, the videos themselves is a great way to learn of the process of how to make the shows, and, you know, how the ideas occurred and what happened and yeah know. i watched the i watched the pilot 137k views 9.7k <laughs> likes that was well received of uh what combaticons yeah the combaticons pilot oh yeah that's really good it was uh hopefully it's still growing but there's a lot of comments on there that's just like when's episode two we, 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 we want to see episode two so. Yeah, that's that. I watched that and it was it was really good. Was but really good. Uh, for those who um, 
I don't know. Can, can you still see my screen? Yeah. Okay. This this, this is the end credits of uh, Transformers Combaticons. And this is the who I played. Cody Lane illustrations. I'm not getting any sound on your end. No sound at all? No. Might have to stream oh. the application instead of share screen. Oh, well. Anyways. Anyways. I played after the thing. <laughs> and uh, I, I helped design Astro Train. Uh, let's see. It was uh, the first rendition of his <laughs> vehicle mode, one of them. Oh, that's like really a, cool. It was a jumbled mess, I guess. But what I did was I tried to incorporate, you know, how I design is I design the robot first and then try and morph it into what it's supposed to transform into. Mm -hmm. So I started out with... Uh, Started out with this. There's a lot of oh, oh, okay. I mean, so I, a lot of people are gonna see that's that's Astro Train, definitely. I can tell that just from his wing design and his helmet design. Mm-hmm. And then um, tried to incorporate that uh, into a vehicle mode, but. Mm -hmm. What you see um, at the end credits is his ship mode, and that's another design that I made, and they were just like, yeah, that'll work. And then uh, I decided to uh, do his train mode. Oh. Like a Decepticon uh, carrier, and it oh, flies that's across cool. the... Uh, like a beam. You, you know, like on Tron Legacy? Yeah. How, how that train, you know, traveled on a beam of light. Like, that's that's what he does on Cybertron. Okay. It's just like a beam of light railroad. Um, I mean, that, that makes sense. Yeah. And um, I decided to go a little bit further and color it in. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So. Oh, my, yeah, it's you know, raining outside. And... Yeah, Anyways, it's, been, it's been nice and sunny over here. We've had a few few hailstorms and all that sort of stuff. At least you're getting rays. Blue skies, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not complaining. <laughs> but no, you know, Cody's been known for doing a lot of cartoon artwork and illustration over the yeah. years. Like, he's been doing this for a long, long time, as far as I can remember. I've, I've tried teaching you. <laughs> I just, I've lost it, dude. I don't draw anymore. Oh, you're the voice guy now. <laughs> I guess. You, you've always been the voice guy. Ever ever since you were a kid, you've been you know, <laughs> reciting TV commercials and lines from movies. and Just quoting stuff. Yeah, yep. I guess. I remember one time you were quoting uh, one of the twins from Transformers mm -hmm. Events of the Fallen. At the pool, and some kid got really offended. <laughs> really? Yeah, you don't remember, remember that? We were at the pool, and then you were like, you know, uh, quoting something. I think I think from Skids or or uh, you know, oh, pop a in his ass and throw him in the trunk. Nobody knows about it. <laughs> and he's just like, what? What? Did you say? what? <laughs> Not in that trunk. <laughs> oh my god. Kid. It was a Mexican kid because the twins were making fun of uh, Leo, who was a yeah. Hispanic character. Yeah, that, yep. is, that is a very racist part of the series. <laughs> Internet, you heard it. Cancel him. Yeah. Cancel Josh. Can, can, cancel me, I guess. <laughs> All you people, cancel Josh. 
what was funny though is like a lot of people actually like those characters. I mean, for the t- at the time they were really at funny. At the time, but, but if you look back yeah. at it, I'm like, oh, these guys are not it. I mean, which is why they didn't add them in the next one. <laughs> probably. Like, I love how we were young and we're like the speculations. We're like, look at the new skids and mudflap vehicle modes. They're gonna be so cool in the third movie, and now we're adults. We're like, oh, that's oh, why. <laughs> jokes went over our heads as kids. Yeah. And we we just thought that they were oh, fun cartoon voice. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's not the case. Nope. Not at all. Anyway, uh, what have you been up to? How are you doing? What's new with you? Well, with me, I've been just well, been doing some long trucking. Uh, Trips over to the west side on a little place called Bainbridge Island. I've been pulling 12-hour shifts mm-hmm. and then just earning overtime. And um, then doing a lot of airsoft. Um, I have – what's cool about the airsoft field is that they uh, they have a lot of – I'm drawing a blank here. <laughs> a lot of pictures. There's this um, there's this short gal, little gal named Joy. She's about, I don't know how tall she is. But um, she comes at the field and takes pictures of the game. Mm-hmm. And um, they, uh, it's pretty cool. Is like, your profile some, picture? Yeah. That's one of them. This is another one right here. So this is my current ghillie setup. Um, Ooh. I'm currently working on a new ghillie, and it's completely custom. So I got me a Rothko Tactical ghillie base, and I have a That's picture cool. of it somewhere. Looks like Chewbacca. Yeah. <laughs> Call sign to Sasquatch. <laughs> Basically, oh. This is on the sass. <laughs> Autumn took this. <laughs> I don't love this photo. <laughs> like, I woke up. He's just like, she's like, babe, we got to do streaks. I'm like, well, just snap a picture. Like the Batman face on uh, Bat Metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you being... Oh, here it is. So this is the starter base. And what's cool about it is it's got a... Um, so you weave your material in those straps right there, and you can weave it through the mesh. And I'm probably going to do mm-hmm. leaf material through the mesh and raffia, which Ooh. replicates dry grass. And then I got That's my crazy. regular ghillie material that I've been weaving. I've been taking a burlap sack and unweaving it. Autumn's been helping me a little bit with that. But it's it's a timely process. It's a trust-the-process process. process. <laughs> and uh, Looking like a redneck Assassin's Creed. Yeah, let's let's just say that. <laughs> That's cool. But yeah, that's uh that's one of the projects that I've been working on. Um mm. There's a few other pictures that have been taken. This is uh So this is one of my camo lo- I got multiple camos that I used to. This so this is regular M81 regular wood- mm-hmm. woodland, but this is the Russian team. And this is when I was a platoon leader and this guy with the laptop is synchronizing the radios so I can switch from one squad to the other. Uh, Baofeng ra- radios are really cool, really cool uh, to have. So it's basically like a ham radio without the ham radio license, and you can encrypt your channels and all that fun stuff. That's cool. So you're basically playing a video game in real life. Basically. And then Autumn was the squad lead. There she is in her gear. <laughs> yeah, she, I, have, I got her hooked on the sport. Nice. Yeah, we have a good time. Um, the field becomes ashes. Yep. Well, my permission to cry. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, her call sign's Ash because uh, so behind that that story, she um, she was responsible for um, um, tending to the fire. So she mm-hmm. was curled up on my lap on my little mini um, camel lawn chair. Dear God, I'm I'm surprised that thing didn't break. Um, so if she'd be curled up and then she feels the cold, she's like, I got to put another log on. And then she would get up half asleep, throw a log on, and then curl back up. So And everybody's like, Ash, there's your call sign. Plus, she's a spitfire. 
and she likes to light up people. Nice. So, oh, um, l- 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 pretty much literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, here is uh, this is the fan art that Nintendo did for me, in the style of uh, um, Butch Hartman, Fairly Odd Parents. Fairly Odd Parents. Oh, nice. Yeah. You even got your necklace. Yeah, that broke. <laughs> didn't last. No, it didn't last. Oh well. Um. But yeah, no Bainbridge and all that fun stuff. Going shooting. It's pretty much it right now. I have a few. Uh... Oh, we did go to Point Defiant Zoo as well. That was a lot of fun. I haven't been there since I was a little kid. I want to hit the Woodland Park Zoo. I've never been there. Ooh. That one so what zoo did you and Autumn go to? Uh, Point Defiance. Point Defiance. It's, it's right before Tacoma. Or around Sounds here. like a really nice zoo to go to. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Um. <laughs> so I've been posting on YouTube, and I've been doing these. Um, they're called shorts. Mm-hmm. And they've been receiving a lot better than my edited videos. It kind of sucks, but, I mean, go figure. This is one of them. It's just old TikTok. This is me doing Stone Cold Steve Austin, a stone toad from Mario. Hey, Mario! That big old 500-pound scum bitch Bowser took the damn princess and used all the star power to put everyone in Peyton. Now take your ass inside those paintings and recover the stars with a little bit of jumping. What? <laughs> A little bit of punching. What? And a little bit of ass whooping. What? The side Princess Peach. And that's the bottom line. Cause Stone Toad said so. Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, oh, this one's glorious. This one's another short <laughs> that we did. This was me and my old uh, roommate Tristan. Uh, good buddy of mine. <laughs> Lo- lo- loves his World War II guns and his old Fords. And his actual kit is like a co- uh, Korea r- uniform. This is me when I'm in my Frank Woods cosplay and he's in his getup. Yeah. <laughs> All righty then. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, I've been doing that, and then... Oh, hitting the gym. How's that going? Oh, it's going good. I'm up to 250 pounds. Lucky. I guess. How much do you weigh? Uh, well, I'd say it's uh higher than that. I mean... But... Take a guess. 260? Uh-uh. Uh-oh. I wish. 275? Nope. Nope. Yeah? I'd say a solid 300. Well, damn, dude. <laughs> I will yeah. say this, though. Um, if you ever decide to go in- into the gym, like, I highly recommend it. Like, you probably heard it from Aunt Dawn and... Rachel as well like it does I mean not just good for physically but it's um um mentally it's great um Mm -hmm. planet fitness is what I go to and yeah it's like a lot of people dog you for going to planet fitness but regular base price for the membership is 10 bucks a month and and it's at least you know there there's plenty of stuff for you to do there exactly and I what I need to do and, and I think that when it's nicer out, then that's when I'll be getting in there. So that way I can not only do that, but also jog. And oh, yeah. All that stuff. Oh, yeah. On watch. And um, it was, uh, I, I do the uh, upgraded package, and it's like 25 bucks a month. But you have access to, I mean, I don't use the tanning beds or the full body enhancement, but they got massage chairs, and they got the Hydra Massage. And I always hit the fucking Hydra Massage, dude. It's a bunch of water jets that shoot into your your backside, back of your neck, your back, your glutes, your hamstrings, your calves, and it just oh, it feels so nice. And it's about ten minutes of that, 
And yeah, I use a roller for my chest and my front stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah. And I go like once or twice a week now. Like, I, for, I mean, uh, for, uh, how long? Uh, it's been about a year. Well, <laughs> no, I mean, like, like, you go in there and you do your set for how long? Oh, I'm, I'm in there for about an hour. Nice. So, usually. I don't think I can do what The Rock does and go in, like, five days a week for four hours. No, fuck that. <laughs> the most I will, I've done is, like, two hours. Yeah. And what's nice is that, I mean,. Sometimes I'll do like arm and chest or uh, back and chest or shoulders and arms or core mm-hmm. and legs. And I mean. And, and you switch off, right? Like yeah. one week you do your leg day and then next week you do your arm day mm-hmm. or torso day. Like, I mean, I'm it's not, I don't have the biggest ping. We are doing a podcast. Uh, would you like to join? Uh, indubitably. Okay. Uh, Cody, this is uh, my buddy Ping. Ping, this is my cousin Cody. How He's do done a lot of uh, concept art stuff. Um, Hi, Ping. Pretty, pretty proud of this photo. Oh, nice. So, I mean, yeah, you see a bit of belly there. I'm trying to get rid of that. <laughs> that's like the thing that's holding me back. Dude, you, you know, you can say you're getting rid of the belly, but that's the lipper curse right there is, is, is. the lipper belly. <laughs> ah, dude. Well, question for you real quick. Um, mm. Do you drink, like, not necessarily excessive amounts, but do you drink a good amount of soda throughout your day or week? I do not. I don't. I barely okay. drink soda. The most that I drink is water, black coffee, um, body armors, or liquid IVs, um, or, like, Mio. So it's not, like, sodas or energy drinks. I barely drink beer as is. And this is, like, the first um, hard mixed drink that I've had this week and alcohol does fuel a lot of that too and I've been a few weekends where I've gorged a lot of beer and hard liquor over the weekend and my belly has just increased and it's like oh no Uh, anyway let's try to go back to the gym and work this shit off Uh, Mm, how can I get rid of this beer exactly like I know. Let's balance it out with coffee. Yeah. Well, it, the funny thing is, so I've tried this. It's disgusting, but it is clinically proven to work. It's lemon juice and black coffee. It tastes horrible. You know, that's not like something I would drink like on a daily basis. Dude, I can't even lie. <laughs> it, it, it works. But... Is this for like fasting? So, so it helps like Before fasting, but it, it helps. Cleanse. It's like a it's like a cleanse and sort of to help you fast. Um, I heard that. Black coffee is also a hunger suppressant as well. So I've been drinking a lot of black coffee throughout the day. And you know the coffee shits and all that stuff? That's mostly towards the sugar and the cr- especially the cream. The dairy products that you usually put in like your coffee and stuff. Surprisingly, creamer does not have any cream in it. Really? It is very it's vegetable oil and water. Oh, that's why. <laughs> that's why. And sugar. <laughs> Yeah, that that's fucking why you're shitting the yourself. Sugar in the vegetable oil. Ugh. But no. Speaking it's... of water, how much water are you drinking every day? Um. So we have a water cooler at work. Um. So it's those little. Uh, it's a little styrofoam cups. I try to save my cup throughout the day because I don't like to waste stuff. I try not to waste stuff, and I'm about seven or eight a day. And during the summertime, it's like maybe more. I carry a blender bottle with me, and I'm probably about three bottles throughout the day if I'm doing a delivery and sweat my ass off. And so, are you okay. drinking tap water at home? Yes. I don't do a lot of bottled water. The only time we really do bottled water is if we're out airsofting because the airsoft field doesn't have any running water. You know what you should try? And this is what uh, my wife and I have, have done before. And we should probably get back into it, but we get a jug of distilled water. Really? That is very good for you. Very good for you. Like, like it's also a natural cleanser. And um, what I used to do is, you know, you do your lemon juice and black coffee. But what I did was I had a jug of distilled water. Mm-hmm. And I put in grade A maple syrup, lemon juice, and uh, cayenne pepper. Huh. huh. That feels like the weirdest combination for us. That is a yeah, strange but... combo. <laughs> 
but that it is just cleans perfect. you out thoroughly. Re- <laughs> oh, I bet. An, it's an enema for for you. <laughs> oh, please so, don't. Oh. So, so it's a laxative. I wouldn't say a laxative. It just cleanses your intestinal tract. Okay. Uh, so does the MREs, but we don't talk about those. Dude, I've had MREs. They're pretty good. It depends on. I mean, the they're book. good, but they're built to give you like constipation, <laughs> and then they give you literal laxatives to take afterwards, like laxative yeah. gum, mm-hmm. because they're just there to make you a better soldier. Yeah, I've had the chili mac. Well, not the chili mac. It was the cheese tortellini MRE, and then oh. uh, Autumn had the pasta marinara. Those are pretty good. The uh, best one, I think, is the. Uh, chili and macaroni. Yeah, the chili mac is far. good too, from what I've heard. Oh, um, God. so yeah, that that's what I've been doing for fitness. And then like, I go hard at airsoft. That field is about like fifty acres, some, and I'm army crawling. I'm hiking the ravine. I'm just marching all over. I'm gilly walking, and you know, and it's Pretty nice that by the end of it. Not really. I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, I am soaked, but I'm not, like, energy drained to where, like... So before, I was a dumbass, and I would drive the night of the game when I was, like, mm-hmm. drained. And when I when I would get home, I would just collapse in my chair. And I'm like, why do I do this to myself? So luckily with this new job, I'm able to get, you know, it, there's no work Sundays. And me mm-hmm. and Autumn are, are able to take the whole weekend to where we can, you know, sleep, camp out in the tent, and then we're... we're slowly just grudging around sunday morning and then mm-hmm. sometimes we'll stop at jake's and have some country fried steak and charge up and hit the road in ritzville oh country fried steak man yeah um but yeah the, I, that's one of the things i want to get you out in cody is it's a good time over there it's it's <laughs> nice it's um you camp wow, out friday so night good, you get drunk and then you try to battle the hangover the next morning with some liquid IVs, get hydrated, eat your brekkie, and then get it, hit the safety brief, gear up, and hit the field. That it, this to you is your elk camp. Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, right. granted, I do like elk camp, and I like the, you know, the hunting aspect of it. Right. But I get to shoot little kids without repercussions. And so, so there I, is, you know, like. You don't Wait, get skunked by the Yeah, you don't get skunked. But it's like, what's also, the funny thing is, is that I'm practicing hunting humans, so to speak. If you All think right, about listen it. here, greatest game or whatever it is. Jesus <laughs> Christ. So, well, yeah, I'm in a ghillie suit, and some of these guys are so fucking oblivious. Like, my ghillie does not match up with the vegetation perfectly at all. So what I do is just it's slow methodical movements as well as well as my silent gear, like my pistol is the quietest on the airsoft market. My sniper is modified to be very quiet but powerful. So you're and, like the predator. Yeah, basically. Um, you said I've, that you uh, shoot little kids. <laughs> <yeah>. Oh, <Can laughs> no, that one? let's not set up that, <laughs> <laughs> sir. Sir, I get it. You live in Washington, but that does not mean you get to do that. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> anyway. Anywho. Anywho. <laughs> but yeah, no. There's been so there's a few gilly stories if you guys would like to hear. Um, to hear please, Papa Josh, tell us a story. <laughs> Tell us a story of how you murdered the children. <laughs> Tell us a story, Mr. Tall, Big, Big Gilly Man. All right. Um, so, so, Papa Squatch. Papa Squatch. Some of, so, some of the guys' kids, they actually call me Uncle Squatch. It's pretty cool. Oh, God. At the camp. They're like, yo, Uncle Squatch, what's up? I'm like, what's up, guys? We're ready to kick some ass, you know? And uh, what's fun is that a few of the guys on the TDL team, one of them's retired uh, retired SEAL Team Two, um, retired Marine Force Recon, retired Marines, retired Army Rangers. They're fun to play with, especially a guy named Joe, who is retired Recon Force Marine. Mm-hmm. Mm. I am zero and two against this man from hiding. He knows where to look. And twice I have had a pistol at the back of my head. (laughs) 
And he's just yeah. like, that's twice Squatch and snuck up on me. I'm like, motherfucker. So. The first story, it is the Walk the Line event. Now, this event is a cartel-based game. And now it's like two cartels. It used to be three. Well, it was like two cartels and the DEA. The, this game involved the three teams. The DEA, which was um, military, digital, woodland digital, desert digital, Marpat, all that. Um, mm-hmm. There was the Los Burros, the donkeys. Uh, they were civilian clothing, cholo looking, blue fa- flannel wearing with the gold chains. Um, that's our current team right now. I made a switch. I will get to that part here in a sec. Um, and then there was the Halcon team, which was like hunter camo, M81 woodland, yeah, traditional woodland green camos and all that stuff. So this year I wasn't on Los Burros with the rest of TDL, the Death Legion, which is our airsoft team that we're part of. Um, I was part of Halcon. And Hal Khan, um, the owner of the field, that was uh, – his name is Dale. I was part of his team. Now, Hal Khan, half of their team likes to puppy card Dale because Dale's always boasted he's never gotten captured. So none of the, my squads are listening to me, and I'm like, all right, fuck this. I take my ghillie, and this is before I had my sniper, so I was rolling with a um, close quarters M4, which, I mean, is good for you know close quarters recon and all that. Um Shoot, I should stream paint to. <laughs> oh my god. So, okay, so this is what we're going to do. Okay, so I am sharing a screen. Screen one. Okay. Opening. Where's paint? <laughs> this is not going to be it's another scribbled IO video. No, it's not a scribbly IO video. <laughs> All right. Do you see the paint? Yes. Okay. And everyone will see your drawing skills. This is going to be very mediocre drawing skills. It always has been. Yep. So, at Nighthawk, we got the parking lot right here. Here's Black Forest. Uh, we'll draw trees. So, here's the trees. Uh, <laughs> here is the town. And this is all a 50-acre field. Here's Radio Tower. Here's the FOB. Right here is the D-Day landing. So, you got your landing craft mm-hmm. right here. And your pillbox is right here. And there's a couple of bases that are above here, but we're not going to go into detail. Over here is what we call the Crucible, which is another little city town. Right here is what we call the Crack House. And then there's a road that goes right over here. So our command is right here. We'll do Los Burros as blue, and then the DEA was like up here by FOB or whatever. Um, (laughs) So this is all like 20 acres across here. I ruck and hide through bush and brush and all here. Run across the D-Day landing. And my mission was to look for narcotics. And now these narcotics, quote unquote, was cocaina, which was like heavy, like flour wrapped in duct tape. Huh. And it, I, so I go check the crack house. And um, there was nothing in the crack house, our radio. And so I walked down the other road that led to the crucible. And there's a, that leads here go through here so i go over to crucible i'm looking for stuff i can't find it anywhere and i'm like i can't find anything mm-hmm. um about 30 los burros are headed my way mm-hmm. and they're about 100 yards away i hoof it too quickly which is probably my demise and i camp right here by the road right here in front of crucible there's a bunch of trees right here Okay. And the whole TDL team, now these guys, they have their encrypted radios and all that stuff. This is our team. When they have comms, they dominate the field. They start to fan out towards this road right here. Here, I'm all gillied up, and I'm covered head to toe, and I'm just prone by a tree. And they walk about halfway through the group past me until one of them at four feet spots me and i'm and and he's like hold on and i pop up i'm like safe to kill safe to kill safe to kill because all of them have all the full auto stuff and i do not want to get lit up Mm -hmm. and they i'm like yeah and uh so i was talking shit to joe this was when i first met the guys and he's like remember when you were talking shit to me at lunch (laughs) he came up behind me grabbed me by the vest 
put a pistol to my head. He's like, you're my prisoner now, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and so the whole Los Burros cartel, let's label them blue, they walk towards this D-Day landing. And this was an unofficial win. Mm-hmm. And so I, they drop the coke off right here. I get killed. I respawn. Um, I head back. They all start to, oh, the Los Burros start to clash with the DEA and Hal Khan starting to clash with Los Burros as a truce. So me and another guy, we head behind enemy lines. We steal the coke out of their noses and bring back to base. So that was the first Gilly story. <laughs> Let's open paint again. <laughs> so actually I can I can I can tell the story without paint. Um just with that one, it had to be really specific with where everything was. Um, so the second story, it was a regular Command and Conquer. The, the, the previous event was a military simulation. Um, regular Command and Conquer is like your regular pew-pew, shoot em up game. And your game's mm-hmm. like, you know, move the objective, capture the flag. This one was capture the flag. There is a team. They call themselves the Chairsoft Association. creative uh, it well they they have these little stools that they'll pop out and they can't with their dmrs and lmgs and nobody will push them because they have very good firepower <laughs> and these guys they're great guys uh one of them his call sign is me seeks like from rick and morty and yep. he, he, he does the whole call and he yodels and stuff and he's got the loudest bright blue dmr and pistol <laughs> and the thing hurts and he chucks nades and everything so here I am in my ghillie, and I army crawl about maybe 50 yards, and I see the flag. Now, this is about, you know, I think midsummer time or late spring where it's nice and green, so my ghillie matches up a little bit better. Um, I army crawl to the flag, and then all of a sudden, you know, nonchalantly, they, they see there's like there's this bush walking with the flag. And so when you when you grab the objective, you have to stand up straight or you have to walk with it and you have to have the flag over your shoulder. So I'm gilly walking slowly. Mm-hmm. Um, I cut right in front of them at about 75 yards. I hear gunshots. And either I take the tree line to my right or the road. They were expecting me to take the road. Nah, fuck that. I go full Sasquatch mode. Like... Like Optimus Prime running through the forest, just bashing trees and limbs, just breaking trail. And this is when before I was hitting the gym and I was out of shape. So I ran about 20 acres and I see that my team and they're like, all right, Sasquatch, you got the you got the objective. And I'm (laughs) and then uh, the CEO pops, he sees me. I'm like, take this. So a couple of his guards take the flag, so we capture their flag. Pops is like, sit down for a moment, son. And I sit down. I chug two Gatorades, and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to go back in, coach. <laughs> so that was the second sneaky beaky. Um, the third sneaky beaky, it was really fun. Um, remember Jason Torrance? Yeah, him and I are best friends. Um, this is when, long story, this is when he got um, out of his divorce and all that fun stuff, blah, 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 blah. And he was depressed. And I'm like, dude, come out the fucking airsoft. And this is when I ended my relationship with that, you know what, the uh, Voldemort-looking yeah. gal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the Wap Twaffle? So, yeah, the Wap Twaffle. We'll, take, we'll, we'll <laughs> say that. And, um, you know, we're just vending around the fire. And I'm like, dude, you're going to have so much fun tomorrow. And Merlin, he goes, I have a leaf suit if you want to roll with Squatch. So Jason was in the leaf suit. I was in the ghillie. And so, okay, opening paint. <laughs> okay, so you have the, okay, fuck, I got to. You got to share it, man. I got to share it. Fuck, shit. Sorry. Okay, so you got the town. Uh-huh. You got trenches right here, and then you got the black forest right here. All of this area right here is all trees. And then you got the radio tower. 
So, and then you got more trenches over here. Mm -hmm. And a good tree line. So you got good vegetation on this right side. Our respawn, so we're going to be the blue team. The red team spawns over here at this flag. We capture this flag over here, and red team captures the next flag over here. Me huh? and Jason, we long flank and ghillie walk around here, taking out everybody. And it's mostly in the town that's the gameplay, but the whole field's in play, the flank. And mm -hmm. not a lot of people knew that. And we took out about maybe five guys. We long flank all the way around here. I post up on a log. I'm all gillied up, just ready to lay waste. And I'm like, all right, Jason, what I want you to do is there is a big wall next to this uh, dirt mound next to this trench. And so I have him walk up. And he starts to lay him out. I start to lay him out as well. We got about maybe 10 kills. And then the game went over. So that was the third one. And then I've had a couple incidents to where, um, like this last game, uh, I was perfectly camouflaged and I was just holding off people. And then Dale, the owner, he claimed he almost got me, but he didn't. Um, and then the last really good gilly moment is from 10 feet away. Um, there was guys responding on the flag that I was about, like crawling to try and take. And um, these two guys, they were walking to respawn. I'm by the snag, and I'm not moving. And I slowly turn my head to the right to see what they're doing. Hand on my pistol just in case on my hip. And I'm just holding still like frenzy in that jet plane. And these guys are about 10 feet in front of me. And what sucks is that the guy by the flag about 50 yards over was starting spotted me and started to shoot at me so i had to blow mm -hmm. my cover and start shooting and then the guy walks around looks around he's like bro i didn't fucking see you there i'm like good i have to move now <laughs> so what's it, it's what i what i think of it is you're practicing hiding from you know humanity and if you move slow enough and just be easy enough it's easy. Now, if it was elk and you were up, like if it was elk and you were upwind, elk would be long gone. That's the only difference. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, it's a good time. It's a really good time. It um, sounds like a fucking good time. Oh, yeah. And we have a Count Brewer. Uh, his call sign is Suds. And he brews a, it's like an IPA flavored beer, but it's not hoppy like IPA. And it's smooth. And then he's got a seltzer that he brews as well. A That's cool. Each. Yeah. Does he sell the stuff? Or is it just for the... It's just for the, the camp. Guy. He works okay. at a brewery. So he's got the knowledge. And he just makes stuff for, from scratch. That's cool. And it's good-ass beer, too. So. He needs a label maker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he does. <laughs> so what's new with you up in... Minnesota. Besides the cold. <laughs> Besides the snow and the rain and the rain and the snow. Yikes. <laughs> oh God. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I must love making bagels so much. We had a snowstorm a few days ago, mm -hmm. and it was twelve inches of snow. Holy shit. And I had to work at four, no, at five in the morning. So I had to get up early and go and, you know, try and get the snow off of my truck. Well, my door was frozen. And this is way before the uh, plows come through to plow the roads, to plow the parking lot, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Well, I, I had to, uh, you know, figure out how to get to work because my boss was just like um yeah we need you to come into work you're the only baker for the day oh and i'm God. just like I, <laughs> I told her hey i'm snowed in i won't be able to get there I, I mean there's two cars that are down by the exit and entrance of where i live that leads to the buildings and they're sl you know they slid and they they're stuck in the road she's like well just you know find yourself an uber then 
<laughs> so the, oh, there's Lord. one there's one girl who works where I work. She's a fellow employee, and her power went out, and uh -oh. uh, her garage door where her car's in, it, she couldn't get to her car. So uh, her boss did the same thing to her, and she only lives like 15 minutes away, mm -hmm. right? Well, she looked at all the you know prices for getting an Uber, and it's like 45 to 50 bucks. Jesus Murphy. Just to get from point A to point B. Now imagine being 26, 30 minutes away and getting an Uber. That's like shit ton of money. Like That's a day's, well, it's like two thirds of your daily pay. Yeah. I mean, That's I'm not just worth like, it. I'm thinking, you know, she, my boss better fucking pay for it if, if that's the case. Mm -hmm. But... You know, I managed to just keep chipping away at the snow on my truck and on my door. And Do you still have that dodge? On, so that way the, yeah, so that way the heater inside is just, you know, melting everything on the outside of the windows. And mm -hmm. put in four-wheel drive, and I hoofed it, and I got there, you know, in like 45 minutes. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> just riding slow. And there were so many friggin' wrecks and... Cars slid into ditches, and there was a, a semi that had two trailers, you know, the two-sectioned trailers. Yeah. It was in a V, and it was flared off. Oh, jeez. There was, like, three cops that were surrounding it. And then I was having to go on to the exit to get to the street where I, you know, go to work. Mm -hmm. um, there were a couple cars that were stuck there, and there was a cop car that was behind it. Well, I just slowly hoofed <laughs> it past him and waved. Hi. <laughs> Just kept going. <laughs> oh, the things I do for money. Yeah. Jesus Christ. So did you you guys drove all the way down to Minnesota? Uh, yeah, we uh, took a three. Dang. I think he cut out again. Uh, total of seventeen. You guys asking something to me? Uh, no, no, no. I think Cody cut out again. Uh oh. He, 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 he will he will he will return here momentarily Th this happens once before <laughs> he's like me with my old internet <laughs> no but uh <clears throat> man i need to get myself into um airsofting i know that was a yeah big thing for you so i might take that initiative to go after it more mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of fun cody oh, yeah. Good coding, Sin. How can I help you today? Let's see here. Am I back? There you go. Yeah. You're back. <laughs> As you were saying. <laughs> Where was I? The, your question. You Minnesota. took the three-day trip? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I took the three-day trip to uh, Minnesota and took the kitty babies with us. We should have try and find hotels that allowed pets in there mm -hmm. um but yeah it was just going and stopping and fueling up halfway when the gas tank was halfway and mm -hmm. getting snacks and enjoying the sights and just making it over and good lord from uh montana montana the, the roads are like stained red Yep, that sounds like Montana. So much roadkill. Yep. <laughs> it's just red splatters <laughs> everywhere. Well, they peep the, the Montana, they take that, dude, and they cook it. Oh, good. Don't, it shouldn't go to waste. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, no. Mon I'd love to settle on Montana. Is yeah. it expensive to live down there or something? Let me take a look here. I'm kind of kind of curious. Um, we all just get a house down there, you know? Not that bad of an idea. Maybe Arkansas. It's pretty good there. I, know, I'm, I guess. My plan is to hopefully move back to Texas. That's a pretty decent place. Get a dog, little longy. Oh, they just legalized the other day weed down there as well. Wow. Heard. Average housing cost in Montana, 590 to 1400 a month. I could afford that. That's easily affordable. But what's like... I... I Base the minimum wage. It's nine ninety five an hour. Uh, wow. I get sixteen fifty an hour. 
fifteen, sixteen an hour. Let's see. Ooh. Okay. Um. Oh, twenty dollars an hour, nineteen dollars an hour. Montana sounds pretty good. Cause I could forklift all day. What did you look up? Oh, just forklift salaries in Montana. And then so, housing is like five, six hundred dollars to fourteen hundred. That's easy. And then we, it'd be, I mean, it'd be relatively close to mom and dad. I could probably just live in Missoula or something like, you're like that. Because you're like halfway between. Well, I could visit Bay my, Ridge. yeah, I could visit Granny in White Sulphur Springs and then mom and dad over in the other side. Huh. I don't know. Just future plans. It never hurts to have them. I mean, all fair to say, I still got to figure out where I'm going to go to college. You know? Go to a community college. That, that's the big plan. You will you get more out of a community college than a university, university or a trade school. Oh, yeah, 100%. Trade school or community college. The problem is figuring out which one I'm going to and where I'm thinking I'm going to move to. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's not bad. I don't know. Future plans. I don't know what I do want to do with my life still. I mean, like, we all are in this call, I think. We're still relatively young, so we still have a lot to figure out in life. Cody's older than I am. How old is Cody? If you don't mind. I'm 28. Yeah, it's not bad. And I'm about to turn 26. Jesus Christ. Uh, you guys are old. Way old. How old are you, way older. Yeah. Um... Older than 19, but younger than 21. But, I mean, he's pursuing his dream of illustration and voice acting. I'm trying to pursue oh, my dream of broadcasting and voice acting. So, I mean, I'm, start, I'm starting to get connections. Cody has already established his connections with uh, Key and Carlisle. Um, okay. If you want to post the link in um, – oh, here. I'll post the link here. I got it right here. I was going to say, if we have side chat set up, we could just throw into the side chat. Here, I'll put the, I'll put the pilot up. Uh, share. Copy. There you go. There we side go. Side chat. What do you mean side chat? How the fuck? What? So look at the video call. Yeah, uh, because you're since you're on PC. Oh. You click on it. Through, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it in announcements, real Bye. quick. I'm gonna watch it real quick. It's oh, really oh. good. It's a fresh take on the Transformers universe. Mm -hmm. Oh, the thing that he the thing that he just posted into chat. Yeah. Transformers come back on. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. I've heard about them. Yeah. I'm a big Transformers guy. Like, I'm ready. I didn't want to see the new one because it looked like a bad one. But. Well, you know, it's uh, your taste, you know. You want something that's more. Uh, Michael Bay. Transformers. Michael Bay ish, then yeah. Because Bay produced it, but. But I'll uh, post some artwork on there. Yeah, you can put but... it in art and photography if you'd like. Go ham, dude. Is this in the you? Chat. Wait, did you do this? Uh, I I helped um, voice act and uh, do some concept art for it and oh, nice. put in some ideas. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me ask, um, what did you, or who did you voice act? Uh... It, He's at the very end credit scene. Very end credit scene. Gotcha. Let me go. And who'd you say you voice? 
Oh, you're like the guy just announcing kind of thing. No. Well, no, he's part. He's a character, but he oh, okay. appears at the end. And then, and then you're voicing another character too, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> I, I did the singing uh, voice for uh, what Brawl was watching. <laughs> oh, oh okay. man, I would love to get into voice acting. That that'd be a dream. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just show some artwork that I've. Yeah, post it in the art and photography, dude. Yeah, I'm also going to post something in here as well, because I've taken some pictures. I'm really getting into photography in general. And let's see if I can access them. Because uh, I took these pictures, I edited them. Phil, let me see it. Let me open up Photoshop. Cause I've, yeah, I've Photoshopped somewhere. Right. Zoom tight. Thank you. God bless you. I'll just love that Dean posted his dog. Doggo. That the, the, that dude looks like a baked bean. Oh, it's cold as fuck. Do you know? Uh, have you have you been to Colorado before, Cody? I've been to Comic Con before. Colorado. No. Colorado. Oh, Colorado. <laughs> No, I have not. What okay. states have you been to? Idaho, Washington, Oregon, and Minnesota. I don't. Please don't tell me I have to sign into Photoshop to access my pictures that I edited. That'd be really stupid if I did. <laughs> we don't want to tell anybody. Uh, here, I'll just... Go to here and do this. P. Where is it? We got posted into this right here. I'm hoping this is the right one. Oh yeah, that's another cool one. A Megatron concept. I've always been like so obsessed with Megatron. Kind of made him like the th the Thanos of the show, mm -hmm. <laughs> look wise. I like what they did with um, I like Blast Off. His hands, it's the yeah. it's the afterburner. That's really clever. And uh, Kian uh, had the idea that his hands can morph into anything. Oh, there you go. Like a chainsaw and a, a Tommy gun or something. Mm -hmm. Or... Mm -hmm. Oh, so I got the. Since I got the link up, I can click on it and we can wa I can watch it here. Alright. Have you thought of a... Uh, what's that one? Autobot. Is it all Decepticons or is it Autobots and Decepticons? So it's... Uh, I'll link Key and Key and's about Transformers. About uh, uh, Meticons who are Decepticons. And um, they're trying to uh, look for Megatron because he's MIA. And um, they run into so many obstacles and comedic hijinks ensues. And uh, there's this one cosmically powerful character who they have to face against. And uh, there's some uh, Decepticons who are trying to capture the Combaticons. Without yeah, I'm posting like 12 pictures in the side chat for you to look at. Yeah, I'll, I'll link Kian's channel in the description. All right. Yeah. So, I, I love your art style. Like, you're, I, I can't, like, I'm genuinely just in awe at it. It's genuinely great. And I love your uh, Grimlock art that you did there in the... Like kind of oh, uh, Beast Wars Megatron? Is that Beast Wars Megatron? I thought that was Megatron. Yeah. No, um, so here's one that I uh, did for uh, Kian's uh, Transformer Season 4. Uh, well, this you know, because Transformers there. Animated Season 4 never happened. So he wanted uh, to create his own Season 4. Mm -hmm. So I did this one. Load. 
I, uh, <laughs> I, I have Anyways. the, um, did you ever watch Transformers Robots in Disguise, like that whole cartoon? <clears throat> the new one or the oh. old one? The, I want to say it's like newish old. The, but it oh, was like 2015 one, probably. It might have been, but it might have been before. Oh, that. the, the, the one that's Earth supposed to be, right? to be a continuation of uh, Prime? Yeah. Mm, no, I think it came before Prime. Let's see if I can find a f picture. Oh, is it the 3D animated anime looking style? Mm, no, ironically. Um, it was an animated series back in, yeah, 2015, I guess. Was that. No, this was before. Yeah, this, that, that, that must be the one that was the, the continuation of Prime. Yeah. There's one before. It had uh, Grimlock in it, Bumblebee, uh, Strong Arm, Side Swipe. Uh, Oh, what's his name? Fix it. Mm -hmm. And then we have Steel Jaw. Um, some other unmemorable animalistic Decepticons mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen all those. Um, the scene, currently, wow. I'm watching Bot Bots on Netflix. <laughs> nice. You know what? No, it was Transformers Animated. That TV show from 2007 to 2009. That's the show yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah, that's the oh, one yeah. that's based off of... Prime? Well, no, no not Prime. That, that the, one's the... just the... Uh, um, what show was next after the Michael Bay movies happened? Mm -hmm. um, so they wanted to make a whole Transformers animated uh, show out of it. Uh, Derek okay. J. Wyatt, who is the art style, was the art artistic style of... Ben 10, and, um... I posted the cover in the side chat. Yeah. Like that, that's... I love that one so much. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. genuinely. Because I remember seeing the animated movie. Mm hmm And being so in love with, like, the characters and the voice acting. And I still have toys for the... I don't know where they are, but for the Optimus Prime and the... What's-his-face? Bulkhead? Um, yeah, Bulkhead. Thank you. I still have toys for them, and the black and purple Megatron helicopter. Mm -hmm. That was a cool... For, like, the early 2000s, that was a really good TV show. I think it was. I, I feel like that uh, it was revolutionary for the Transformers um, community, because they took a lot of stuff from Animated and made it canon in, like, IDW and... Uh, future Transformer shows. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, one second. Mm -hmm. Unicorn. I'd, wait, Unicorn was in that movie? Or was that in that TV show? Which TV show? A animated? I don't think yeah, he was animated. animated. No. I, for whatever reason, I feel like. He, I know it wasn't him but there was another like large scale transformer like he was a whole ass ship for them i remember that the state omega of... supreme it might have been omega supreme from what i Hot i, I want to say it was what age of extinction hound should have been bulkhead yeah 100 percent. he should have been that would have made so much more sense same voice actor as well yeah bill fargerbucky well i mean i mean john goodman I mean, he was good him. overall, but yeah. Here's a couple characters that uh, me and Josh created. And I Here's a hot like take. Transformers. Really oh yeah. Stuff. Here's a little bit of opinion. I wish I could voice. They should have brought in. Um, was it Jetfire or what's his name? Blitzwing. They should have brought in Blitzwing into the movies. The one that switches personalities. Mm-hmm. I mean, they did that it in Bumblebee, be. but I don't yeah, agree with I the mean, character design. But yeah, these are even... a couple of uh, characters that me and Cody based off or just made. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, mm -hmm. Cody's character drawled in the back with the cigar. And in front, that's Pulse. And uh, what is what is Drawl's character? I mean, Blitzer. Oh, it's Blitzer? Yeah. 
Was I don't think I forgot Blitzer. Uh, so I, I, I made a Transformers Prime draw. Um, let's see. I think Blitzwing, by far, though, was probably one of the cooler ones, I would say. Because he could be either a tank or a plane, and he had multiple personalities. I think that was, like, one of the cooler things about him. Yeah, there's Drawl. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Drawl looks fucking... Like, a. What are those guys in Skyrim? The yeah, the guys who make the giant robots and like the little ro ball robot things. You know what I'm talking about? No, but I could see the Skyrim style. I didn't. I never played Skyrim. It's like dwarven. I think it was. Yeah, it was dwarven. He looks like somebody that would be dwarvish. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get a good picture of their face or something like that. Because he looks like one of these robot things. Yeah. Here we go. I'm just put it in side chat real quick. And then I also made him in a live action form. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you see the similarities that I'm seeing? Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's not a bad live action. I... Jeez Louise. Do you guys like full on draw that out? Or do so... you guys... As a kid, I used to make concepts for him for some characters, and he would just go above and beyond with the character design. Good man, I I've never been that creative. I start you just start. So, <laughs> but yeah, Pulse. He was uh he was the first character I made. He was based off a '98 <laughs> Supra, and like a tuner, but he had stuff like Soundwave. He had sound cannons. He would use like pulse beams or whatever and uh sound waves to bounce and jump high mm -hmm. well now here's a question for you have you ever played the transformers like video games like oh um, yeah um what was it like fall of cybertron or something like that fall of cybertron more cybertron we did i did play those as well as the dark of the moon game and the revenge of the fallen game and then the first yeah. movie game as well you played the dark of the moon game yeah it's pretty good actually um, so I've only watched that? the uh, uh, videos of them, like Ironhide versus Mixmaster. Um, I think the I've done the game better play. Transformers game would be the Transformers movie game from like the early two thousands. I mean that one was good, but Fall of Cybertron and War of Cybertron was a whole nother level. Yeah, I think it's just I like that open world concept, I guess. Yeah. For Transformers, because you you know graphics you know don't hold up to standards today, but. If for the time being, that was one of the top games I would have played over like the Revenge of the Fallen game or something like that. Metroplex was definitely a cool boss fight. And uh, War Cybertron, though. Oh, yeah. That And then who was the other one that you got to fight? Was it Fall Cybertron? It was Trypticon that you fought. Yeah. War like Cybertron. Oh, Trypticon. And I, then I thought it first was cool it was what they did Omega with Supreme. Trypticon in, in that game is that for Trypticon's punishment for failing to destroy the Autobots, he turned into the Nemesis. Yeah. It's like, I think that damn, Trypticon was by far one of the cooler Transformers of the whole series, I think. Yeah. Oh, wait, shit, there's a 1980... He was around in the 80s. 1981. Yeah. I didn't even realize that. Well, in 86, during the third season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they remade the toy in totally with, uh, with Hasbro. Yeah. So that's cool. And then, well, that was another. So there was a other. There's a few other characters Devastator. that I made. Oh, well, I was gonna say Devastator. Uh, Gearbox. Movie. Yeah, Gearbox. So Gearbox was an, is an old scientist, Decepticon scientist, and he transforms. Uh, the concept we based that on. Remember the Chevelle that Epps drove in yep. Dark of the Moon. Yep. Uh, Chevelle. Which one are we? A light blue Chevelle. Chevelle. I don't remember that one. I don't want to say. I don't remember that. I blue Chevelle. It's a real nice car. I'll look it. Up. I'll have to look it up. Uh, I'm um, looking but... it up right now. But yeah, I based it off that. Didn't we ha give him like a cork? Like he he. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So now. yeah, that's Gearbox. <laughs> oh, okay, sick. 
That's so sick. yeah, he's a dis- he's a Decepticon scientist that defected to the Autobots. Huh. And then Yo. I uh, based my my Dodge Dakota, right. but it's like a F one fi- like today's vehicle would be like a Ram TRX or F one fifty Raptor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With all the off road stuff and the light bars and stuff, I made that the Autobot bounty hunter uh, muzzle brake. <laughs> What is his main weapon? I'm presuming it's like some kind of sniper. Uh, yeah. Something like lockdowns except handheld. So is this like you give the concept idea to some, like to Cody or somebody and they yeah. would draw that out? Okay. Mm-hmm. Like uh, for muscle break, uh, let's see if I can get. Uh... Light sweeper would be a um, F-35 or F-22. Well, I guess there's already F twenty two, so it have to be something. There's also different. an F thirty five. That's breakaway. Um, I did make an F six. Yeah, I didn't. I made an F sixteen. Uh, Transformer Sidewinder. <laughs> She's a small, <laughs> flying Autobot. And then I based my awesome Subaru thing? off of. Uh, her name is EQ, and it's Soundwave's uh, second in command. Was there, are, Here's a uh, Transformers Prime, Prime version of uh, or head of muzzle brake, and it's like. He's wearing one of those ball cap hats, but the uh, visor part goes down into... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, hear me out. Yeah, For that's the fir- cool. I have an idea. Um, Josh, you know the... You, you know what I'm talking about when I say the F-104, right? Yeah, the Starfighter. Yeah, let's, let's do a concept of that and we name him Lightbreaker. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't or think there's any t- notch. Ooh, notch. Like you're notching missiles. Yeah, I mean that sounds good. Is there one in a... Uh, huh? that's what I'm. Let's see, trans. I'm looking him up, but there's no such thing as a F-104 transformer. There's only like C-130. <laughs> that's the only thing that's come up so far. Omega Sidewinder, huh? Oh, it's just weapons. There's no transformer oh, named Sidewinder. Mayday. <laughs> if there's a transformer named Mayday, it needs to be the uh, Osprey. <laughs> oh man, there was um. Yeah, there's an Autobot preview. There's somebody named Mayday. Yeah. The one of the Transformers I really liked was um, Astro Train. Mm-hmm. I don't know oh. if you know about that one. Yeah, he, he does. the Space Shuttle and the Train. That one was dope. Yeah, Cody's made concept for the pilot up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The combative Have, have you seen those yet? I don't think, yeah. you, show, I don't think you showed him. Mm, I love yeah. your um, Insecticon drawings. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the one above that is just all I can think of is that Transformer's name is Bubba. No, that's Muzzle Break. Oh, okay. <laughs> Astro Train that I designed. I'm putting my big socks back on because my feet are freezing, man. I'm about to do an unboxing today as soon as I get to the mail. Uh, my tarn came in the mail. Your what? Tarn? Tarn. Chewy. Yeah, oh, shit. Just... That looks dope. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Hear me. Okay. Hear me out, though. Star Wars Transformers was one of the greatest crossovers they've ever done. That was a cool crossover. I spent my favorite had to have been. Cause I still have them. Like I don't know how close to me I have them right now, but I have the General Grievous one with me. Noise. That one was pretty cool. Is that the one who turns into his uh, wheel. Vehicle? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was that, a cool one. That was. A cool I think. One. I think in general the entire crossover was the greater. On. I feel like they should have done a Jar Jar Binks one. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> Me and Josh immediately had the same reaction. Okay, they made it. Death. They made but, it. But, he, but it would it would be cool because he transform because he would transform into that uh, underwater 
um, yeah, the little, vehicle that uh, they would go to the Gun Gun City. Yeah, the little yeah. vehicle underwater ship. Yeah, and then yeah, shitty C three PO and Phantom Menace would be one of the pods. They, yeah. somebody, so they made a Millennium Falcon where it's two pieces. One is Han, the other one is Chewie. That, uh, that makes one sense. looks that one looks kind of dope. But then I remember a, seeing that in an old Spider Man comic book that I had the two <laughs> Transformers, Han Solo and Chew- Chewie. Mm-hmm. I had the Captain Rex um, ATTE at one point, and I also had the Darth Vader Tie Advance. Like those are my two that I had. And the one I really kind of want is the Jang- the two that I really want is the Jango Fett and uh, Slave One, and then also the Vendor. Mm-hmm. Those two are like really dope looking, and they look like they have a pretty clean transformation. Oh, cool! They have a Darth Maul one. Yeah, I didn't expect to see that. Yeah. The clone turbo tank, though? Oh. Man, why can't they bring back these collaborations? They would make so much money off of it. They would. It's all licensing and stuff, though. Yeah, Hasbro with all that jazz. (laughs) Yo, wait, what? They apparently made an Anakin Skywalker that was supposed to be a Venator and a Darth Vader one that was supposed to be a Star Destroyer with sounds and everything. See that one? That's kind of have cool. a Yoda one. Hold on. <laughs> oh yeah, the Yoda one. Yeah, so that's really cool. I'm going to look and see if I can find one. That's for sale. Well, because... I'm down for continuing chatting. I'm just gonna I'm gonna at, end the podcast here. It's about an hour and a half. Oh boy. Yeah, we yeah, flew, flew, we flew through that, but I'm down to continue chatting in here. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna close out real quick. Um, Thank you guys for watching. If you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, make sure you leave a like, hit that bell notification, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Goodbye, yeah, public people. Site. Yeah, thank you, Cody, for Bye. being on. Thanks for having me, Josh. You're awesome. <laughs> and make sure to uh, check out um, Cody's uh, artwork and Kian Carlisle's uh, Transformer YouTube channel. I'll link it down below in the description. Have a good night, right. guys.